Hello, welcome to San Francisco Independent Short Film Festival. I'm Kate from Festival Formula, and today we'll be speaking to some of the filmmakers featured in the Madness, Mayhem and Murder program. So I'm going to start with a little icebreaker question for everyone. If you could be any movie character, who would you be and why? I'm going to start with... Um, Josh, because he's been quiet mm. over there. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Can everyone hear Josh? Well, one of my favorite film characters is Indiana Jones. So I guess I'd say I'd be him because he gets to have lots of fun and he never really loses. That's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. Um, yeah. Syra and Bailey, what about you two? You know, it's a great question. <laughs> I'd probably be Natalie Portman in The Professional. Uh, <laughs> I feel like she is a total badass and would grow up to uh, be a very well-rounded person. <laughs> <laughs> Despite all the violence. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's good to have that under your belt, you know? Just. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Bailey? Um, I guess I'm gonna have to go to one that like really speaks for my childhood and more in like television. Um, I was really obsessed with the book The Golden Compass, so the new His Dark Materials sequel, oh. uh, series would be fun, mostly because I get to ride a polar bear, and I think that that would be a fun adventure. Definitely, definitely. Um, Richard, what about you? Well, considering the mood I'm in, I think Hannibal Lecter would go very well for me. <laughs> so I could just destroy the Republicans piece by piece uh, and take Trump and do some really horrible things. And I best, it's being recorded, I best not, I might go to jail, I best <laughs> not do anything more. But after last night, um, you know, and then a couple of other guys who, like to slice people up, you know, which yeah. there's a litany of them. So I think I'd best stop there. <laughs> All right then. Um, Christiana from Gods of okay. Summer. Yeah. Uh, I'm a lover of Hitchcock movies and my favorite is Psycho. I imagine that being him is not the best, <laughs> but maybe I would be uh, the female character because I, I don't know, I would try to change the story. Being okay. Her. So um, yeah. the, the, the lady who gets... Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> and we'll so try to change the story. Yeah, because I like that kind of movie, you know? <laughs> oh, cool. So you'd be the one turning around and... Yeah, yeah. maybe to <laughs> change a little yeah. <laughs> the mood, yeah. Uh, yeah. Chris, Christina, what about you? Um, I'm a huge superhero movie fan so I'd probably be Black Widow because nice. she's a little badass <laughs> and <laughs> her whole arc of her story throughout the entire like 20 plus films is I think one of the best so yeah it would definitely be her. Yeah I agree I agree that is a cool one. Um, Matthew what about you? Um, I'm gonna go James Bond. <laughs> Good one too. <laughs> Get to drive fancy cars, drink a lot. Yeah, travel. Meet strange women that want to kill me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Why not? <laughs> um, Peyton, what about you? Uh, I'm stuck between two right now. Um, I'm stuck between either Spider-Man, because I feel like that would just be, like, so much fun. And honestly, the main appeal of that for me is just getting to work with all the other actors that are in those movies. Um, or I think more on like the television side, maybe like Walter White from Breaking Bad, which obviously I don't resemble at all at this point <laughs> in my life. However, uh, I just love, I love his whole character arc. So I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, two very different characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nicholas, what about you? I'm stuck between two characters as well. And I'm an animation director. So one of them is animated. The other one is live action. The first one is um, 
One of my favorite movies is Robin Hood from 1973 from Walt Disney. Yeah. And he uh -huh. was so cool. Robin Hood, he was so cool the way he moved and completely careless. And the other character is completely careless as well, but it's a Taylor Durden from Fight Club. Ah, uh, <laughs> so uh, it's amazing. So, so it's, between, it's between Robin Hood and Tyler Durden. It's an interesting combination. <laughs> go with Tyler, go with Tyler, man. <laughs> so there you go. I love that movie. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna say Catwoman, just because I got cats. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay then, so I want to know, because this is such an interesting program, um, nobody has like a film that has one specific genre. That's what I found so interesting about all these films. Um, so I'm really keen to find out from each of you, what was the inspiration behind your film? Like, how did you come up with the story? Um, I'm going to start with Syra and Bailey, because I can only imagine what the inspiration was. <laughs> um, so we originally, I don't, I don't, that, we originally made the film for a 48 hour film project. Yeah. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that, but uh, you basically are given a genre um, to do on like a Friday night. You have to turn in the film by Sunday. Uh, so our our film, our genre was comedy, which we were excited about, but we wanted to take it down a darker road, um, a little more Shaun of the Dead kind of vibe, uh, something a little unexpected, which I also, well, everybody would have seen this by now, right? Correct? Watching this. So there's no like spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have yeah. a confession. I didn't see it. I'm, I'm afraid I haven't seen anybody's movie. I am horrible. You guys can write me hate emails. I'm so sorry. I've, I've, I've been oh, in the yeah, editing we'll room. It for you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. there's something Boy. exciting about a group of women in a book club that seems so, you know, prim and proper on the outside. Um, taking, getting joy out of murdering someone for the passion of the story. Uh, yeah, and really during our writers meeting, one of our actresses, Joanna, was like, um, I'm gonna kill somebody. Um, and so we were like, okay, cool. We'll just see if we can fold that in to what we're doing. And it, it worked really well. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. awesome. Did you have to come up with the story as well within 48 hours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're given a character you have to include, and they have to have the, the given profession. You're given a prop you have to include, and you're given a one line of dialogue in your genre, and the rest is completely up to you. Yeah. So ours was, uh, the character was a voiceover artist named Linda Turlington. Uh, the prop was a golf ball, and the line of dialogue was, she's not in charge anymore. And so everybody has to use that in each one of their films, but everybody has a different genre. Ah, that's really cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Sounds like a game show. It's great. Yeah. Um, Peyton, I know you're the lead actor in your film, but um, do you know um, if the, what the inspiration was behind the film, what, if the director told you? I mean, there's a lot of different inspirations, uh, but I think, you know, just with having plenty of conversations with him and, you know, working uh, very closely with him on set, and I would say I, I would say I was pretty involved in the the you know creative process of of the movie. Like he wrote the script, and then he gave it to me and the other actors, and we just kind of he let us interpret it how we wanted to do it, and then that's how it ended up being. So I feel like we we definitely tried to implement a lot of like like it, it it's supposed to be you know emotional. Um, and I would say thought provoking, but also like there's there's like some horror elements in there. I I I find it to be a really interesting blend, honestly. Um, and it's just like we we kind of just let it like just free flow almost. Like whatever feels right is how we're gonna do it. 
just kind of like there was no real set boundaries, I wouldn't say, uh, for like any type of genre. Okay, cool. Um, Nicholas, what was the inspiration behind Things Are Looking Up? Um, I, I do, I'm mainly an animation director and I'm switching to live action and I love the change. I love, I plan for animation and I shoot in live action. So I have everything planned. And I always liked the, I always liked uh, thrillers and um, uh, Hitchcock, David Fincher and my, my favorite directors. And I was in San Francisco and I called an Uber and I sat in, in the Uber. And when I sat in, the guy looked at me and I asked him, are you my Uber? And he looked at me and says, no. <laughs> and he said, I'm sorry, it was the same car. And I looked on the car, exactly the same car. I think it was a, a silver Prius. And I, I, I had this chill inside me and I left and I was thinking, what if he would have said yes? What would have happened if he would have said yes? So that's how I got the, uh, the, the whole story. And then he goes in, into a very dark, dark uh, twist, of course. And, and in, the, in this short film, I, I, we wrote a, a feature based on the, on the film um, that wraps up a bunch of things. I'm not sure if you guys seen the film, I don't wanna give any spoilers, but when you see the film, uh, you'll realize what I'm, what I'm talking about because it's, it's very creepy. I sent it to my sister, she's the writer too. And I sent it, she's in Argentina, and I sent it at 8 p.m. And she told me, I'm gonna read it tonight. And the next day, he told me I, I couldn't fall asleep with all the nightmares you gave me. I said, "Well, it works. <laughs> it works." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it definitely, it's it definitely a creepy piece. So you you used yeah. to be you you're an animator. This is your first time doing a, a live. Yeah, oh, this wow. year I finished. It's it's my fourth. Uh, with I finished my fourth animated film, which is called On Off, and it's premiering in LA Short Fest on um, this weekend, the fifth actually. Cool. And the, the live action is the first one that we finished. Um, we finished in, in last December. And I remember we were trying to finish on time and then COVID hit. <laughs> All of this and you're a teacher. <laughs> yeah. And oh, I love wow. teaching too. So I try to juggle everything. Oh, cool. Wow. Jack of all trades. <laughs> yeah. um, Josh yes. and Christina, what is the inspiration behind? I mean, I, I gathered it was filmed during um, the lockdown. I don't, is the lockdown still happening in the States? Or is it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Some places. Yeah. But we're in Los Angeles, so it's definitely still happening here. Oh, God. Um, I actually work as, as an accountant outside of filmmaking. So when we started working from home in March, we had weekly conference calls. And... I was trying to think of some type of project that I could do while stuck at home with some of my friends. And it's, that's kind of where the idea came from. Um, so it's very much inspired by my job. Um, the other thing is I grew up with, my parents really like murder mysteries and Agatha Christie. So I thought it'd be a fun mix to throw in like a classic whodunit style in the whole Zoom meeting setting yeah. and then have everybody shoot all their stuff by themselves and I would just have fun editing it all together. <laughs> was, was it fun editing it all together or? It was a lot of work. I should probably have waited till everybody sent me their stuff and then do it. But every time I'd get somebody's footage, I'd get all excited. So then I'd fit, fit all that in and then I'd have to re-edit everything again when a new person sent me stuff. So it took a lot longer, but I mean, I had a time, so I guess it was fine. Awesome, well done, congratulations. Um, Christina, do you have anything to add to that or? Um, Josh is, is, I've worked with him on a couple of projects now and he's the type of director that just lets us actors do what we want basically with a little bit of direction. So a lot of the stuff that I did for my character, he didn't even know about until I told him <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> um, especially like my ending and, and everything like that. He didn't know like, the degrees and levels that I did for my character, which was which was pretty awesome, because I surprised him, as as well as all the other the actors and stuff. But yeah, it was really fun. It was different being remote because you don't have those other actors to like go um, off of and and stuff. But this is this is the day and age of where it's uh, everything's done remotely now. So it was nice to be able to do that, especially early in the quarantine. Okay. Cool. I think with all the restrictions, it's allowed people to possibly think more creatively and maybe yeah. even be more efficient with 
budgets as well. As boring as talking about budgets are, I'm not going to do that, don't worry, but it's <laughs> for independent filmmakers that could be quite an exciting prospect. Yeah, you definitely have to get creative. <laughs> Which, you know, being an accountant, Josh, that's probably quite helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matthew, what's the inspiration behind First Lesson? Um, kind of road rage. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was actually, actually, it was a, this place where, um, where I work, where I used to work at Lucasfilm and on the way home, um, there's a four-way stop and there's always people getting really, really upset. <laughs> And somebody was screaming one night and I was like, oh my goodness, like, this is kind of nuts. And I kind of thought like, what if this guy could act out what, you know, his emotion right now, just on the spot, just go nuts. I think Richard can relate to that. <laughs> but like, and then, and then it's almost like, I don't know if you guys have seen the film, but there's a, there's a kind of a parallel universe where people get to hash out their, their differences. They kind of get a second go at the argument and, and it kind of spun from there. And, and then I live, at, I got to shoot right in front of my house and there's this weird intersection where people get confused about the bike path and the light and people scream at each other and honk and go completely ballistic. So I kind of started from that. And I have worked in visual effects for a long, long time. And so my brain kind of works that way and everything kind of gets, I guess, whittled down to visual effects and these parallel worlds. And it's always something that I've loved is these kind of weird strange places that you can take characters and kind of kind of explore um i guess not social issues but like road rage i wouldn't say is a social issue i think it's just anger or yeah. fears or whatever and and that's kind of how i ended up in that world it was actually watching people be angry road, road rage could be a social issue because it's like a byproduct of capitalism almost so. yeah and just stress and the, the things people are dealing with at home and and and, they're, and one of the characters is essentially that and it was interesting because at first i thought what if this world existed where you could kill someone and then you get to go somewhere and then you work it out and i was like well people would just start being nice to each other and then i spoke to my cinematographer and i he read the script and he was like can you imagine how awful it would be to work to live in a world like that everyone would be nervous and scared and always stress and tense. And I was like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. And then I kind of adjusted the script accordingly. And, and I just thought that was interesting because people are living that way right now where they're just always tense because of money, because of whatever situation is going on in their lives. And then they get behind the wheel of their car or whatever it may be, and they just blow up and, and it does happen. And oh. anyways, so that, that was kind of the, <laughs> the seed for my film. That's really interesting. Mm. I like, I'm like hearing all these, it's always <laughs> like one little thing that sparks off uh, the inspiration behind these short films. I'm always really fascinated to find out what they are. Um, Richard, what's... Um, so my wife um, actually wrote this film. We kind of co-wrote it, but my wife wrote the film. I, I've been very lucky and fortunate. I, um, about a year and a half ago, um, I found some investors that was willing to put some money into short content, you know, with everything online and just these various platforms. And you guys are familiar with this, this Katzenberg thing that has failed called Quibi, you know, the quick, the Quibi thing. And so you fa hold, you failed. Yeah, it's failed. Thank God. Yeah, it's failed. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. He's try they're trying to sell it. Yeah. Which I was, uh, I, I had a, I had a, tentative deal there and they blew me off for Spielberg. So I was like upset, like Zelnick or Spielberg, you know what I mean? But these 10 minute movies, you know, I think they made big mistakes. They should have taken unknown filmmakers or, you know, I've done a few things in the feature world and they should have let guys like us come in and do it instead of the Guillermo del Toro's and Spielberg's and all the big oh, I, I so, completely, hey, yeah. I completely it, misunderstood. It, it, I thought it was for no, for no, uh, no filmmakers, but it was. No, no, it was, that's what everybody was hopeful of, that new filmmakers or, or people who aren't famous and big names, um, they actually wrote my manager a letter saying, well, he hasn't won an Oscar, so we're going with, you know, I mean, it's just disgusting. Um, yeah. Another thing that I can be angry about, um, anyway. Um, Hannibal Lecter all the way, right? Yeah. Um, 
so yeah so my point is is that um so i've made a couple um, with these investors and with with the same actors or not all the same but i sort of have a crew of of seven or eight unknown actors that i'll work with or 10 unknown actors that i work with in the genre because i'm a feature filmmaker and i've, I've done a couple of things and so you don't have to use big names for those things. Long story short, we we had investors that gave us a Lake Arrowhead um, location, and it all takes place in the woods. So the only the only um, limitation we had is it had to take place in the woods and um, and use this particular home in that area. And so uh, my wife and I, you know, just kind of came up with this idea. She wrote it and. And then we put it together and this investor was great and we got to make a nice little movie. And uh, that's, oh, the inspiration. So it's a nineties thing. Like we, I actually wanted to make a movie about, we sat down and said, okay, let's do, we both love nineties horror thriller movies. Um, uh, and, you know, and tell a story. And I wanted to flip it. Like I said, let's flip it. Let's have the woman be more, I don't know who's seen the movie or maybe no one's seen the movie, but it really is. It's the woman who actually um, takes care of the guy, you know, he's like, you know, he's, it isn't like, you know, these stupid movies, man, oh, the heroic guy who's got to take the poor damsel in distress, fuck that, you know? So yeah. we said like, let the woman, you know, take care of business. And she does in this movie and it's great. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, so it was inspired by 90s movies. I could name a litany of them. I'm a big fan of John Carpenter's and oh, yeah. Halloween yeah. stuff and um, all those guys. They made, you know, the 90s had some great horror stuff. Yeah. I'm a big, a big fan of those guys, the, the 90s filmmakers, you know. Yeah, definitely. I think it's always interesting in, in like horror films or action films, they always have the female character turning around and being like, what do we do? I know, sickening, like, right? When has a woman <laughs> ever done that? <laughs> I know, right? And 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 in back end for you guys, you saw like it was kind of Ciara, you know, the girl, mm -hmm. the girl who was kind of like, oh, the poor guy broke his ankle, you know, poor baby. So she mm -hmm. just carried him on his back, and it was great. I, was, uh, I think it was really nice that it was driven by a woman, and the story is driven by a woman. Definitely. I like the I like the movie The Game with Michael Douglas, David Fincher, yeah. and there's a there's a woman. On that carries a story that it, right. Michael Douglas is like this puppy doesn't know what's happening and the right. girls just like keep figuring everything out and I love that character. Yeah, yeah, that was a great movie. I like that. Yeah, movie. one of my favorite movies. Yeah, yeah. and movie. horror also does this great thing where it's like the last woman standing um, trope, which I think our oh. horror always gets a bit of flack for like not being very female empowering. And actually, I think out of all the genres, horror is probably the most empowering to female characters. Um, but it's getting better. Like, yeah, it is. <laughs> definitely getting better. Um, before I um, continue, um, Nicholas being the teacher, the working man that he is, he will need to leave us um, very soon. So I just wanted to give the opportunity to say goodbye and thank you for, for joining us or anybody else who wants to say goodbye to Nicholas. Bye. Um, yeah, thank but, you so much for having me. I would love you. to stay, but, I, but my students are waiting. So. <laughs> no, 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 no worries. I mean, if you want to, if you I can stay, go. like we won't tell. <laughs> 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 I may try to come back during the break. We have a 15 minute break soon again. I may try to come back. But thank you. Okay. It was a pleasure meeting all of you, and I'm looking forward to seeing all your films. No worries. Thank you for joining us, Nick. For being Take here. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, Christiana, what was yeah. the inspiration behind um, The Gods of Summer? Okay, there are, there are a lot of things. I mean, uh, I wrote a short story in one of my books, this is the very first short story I wrote about it. And I decided to make my first short just about this story. And uh, well, there is uh, the superficial level, the inspiration is just a summer between friends. So, you know, first love and the loss of love and all that, those things that we all know. And then uh, the deeper level, there is like, you know, the way we see the life, that sometimes it's not the same way the other person see the same life. So I like the, the idea that we can hear about a story that is totally different from another point of view. So uh, I like, like the, the story is double. Yeah, I can't 
say this without spoiling <laughs> because you know <laughs> this is the story about but um yeah it's like there are two stories it's the story is the in the character's head there's the story we hear all the time and we believe that that is the true story but then when we know that the story was just her story the story she had in mind and not the truth Mm -hmm. Everything is like, it's split, it's like struck down and, you know, you have a totally different interpretation. Yeah. And yeah, she's, and I think, well, what I, what I wanted to say is that she's not just lying to protect what she did. She's just like inventing something in her head to go ahead with her fantasy, to live what she wanted to live. So uh, yeah, the inspiration is how we see life and and sometimes we want to like go ahead with our dreams our thoughts even if the reality is totally different so like the idea of exploring this side of us that sometimes is totally hidden we don't don't talk about it with other people we just keep it and this is just like you know it's symbolic it's not it's not the reality uh, it's like an extreme thing that yeah. she does to keep the things alive as they were. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Okay. This is about. <laughs> well, I think it's pretty interesting because I think we all do that in a way. You can think of old memories or friends, and the lens where we view our friends or our family or whatever is is our mm -hmm. own. And they, you know, like your friends could be complete jerks <laughs> to other people, <laughs> but to you, they're really nice people. You know, it's it's kind of the perception you have. And even like sometimes if you look back at at old memories, you can kind of have the same thing. You have your version yeah. of that memory. And I thought it was yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. I really think that. So I just wanted to explore this thing and show a movie that you can divide totally in two. You can review from the very be beginning and change whatever you have watched in until that very moment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Christiana. Thank you. Um, so I've always wanted to ask this question in a Q&A and I've never really had the opportunity to yet. Um, if you could change one aspect about the film industry, what would it be? Or what do you think is currently lacking in the film industry? Who wants to go first? Richard. <laughs> talk that I'd like to put in my two cents, right? Go for it. I, most of my friends tell me I have to get out of myself more and really express myself because I'm so quiet. Um, <laughs> so, well, what I was talking about in the Quibi situation, um, I think that uh, young, and when I say young, I don't mean in chronological age, I mean, younger filmmakers or younger writers to the craft should get more opportunities to uh, to get thrown into the mix um, and not wait until they win awards or until they get, you know, X, Y, and Z behind them, then, oh, okay, then we can give them a shot with a bigger budget. And I know everything has to be monetized and I understand the whole process. I'm older than most of you guys. I've been doing this for 32 years and I've had some opportunities. I've made three features. They've all done well. I made a bunch of shorts. I have, you know, and as a writer, I've had a very big career. Um, but for me, I'm working like with actors now that are having an opportunity. I teach and, and coach actors and writers um, as part of the work I do. And they're getting an opportunity to be in these little movies I'm doing that they normally would never be seen. They just wouldn't get the chance. Even actors like Peyton, I'm sure you get that experience. Even if you get a shot at auditioning for, you know, a decent budget movie or a TV show, there's five other name people that they have in the, in the wings. So actors get very few chances. And likewise for writers, you know, their scripts are sitting on a shelf somewhere because they have to know someone. You know, I was repped at William Morris for 12 years. And uh, the reason I got seen be, is because I was repped by William Morris. So, but people who don't get that chance, then they're, they're just over overlooked, you know? And, um, and even film festivals, you know, oftentimes I'll bet you your films are all great movies 
and they won't make it to Sundance or they won't make it to South by Southwest because you don't you're not don't have a director's name and you don't have an actor in there that has some clout or a producer that can make mm -hmm. a phone call to the people that run the festival. And I find that reprehensible. I find it just a horrible system that has to change. Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, so that's that's what I'd like to see change in, in the movie business, that you know, politics have to be out of it and it should be the merit of the movie. Because I've been in festivals, Beckham's been in 21 festivals now and they've all been like the second tier or whatever, second tier, third tier, whatever, but we haven't made it to the top 10 or 12 festivals not because of the merit of the movie, right. simply because, you know, some people know who I am, but I'm not a name director. Mm -hmm. Ciara Hanna is a semi-name actor, but not huge. She's a power ranger, you know, um, which doesn't mean much to people at Sundance because people like Brad Pitt can make a call or Jennifer Aniston and say, I want my movie in. Or someone will, you know, someone like that will go make a short film and it will automatically be yeah. escorted into the festival because of their position. I just think, I just think things have to be, I mean, the system's broken in this country all over. We could get into all that stuff, which don't get me started. No, it's, I understand what you're saying. It feels like a hierarchy and people oh, need to be being at the door constantly just yep. to get a little finger in. Yeah. And it's interesting talking about um, Sundance because it has this, this reputation as the the ultimate independent film festival and it really isn't <laughs> it isn't at all and in fact if you guys were to watch movies at sundance there's garbage in there you'll go to these other small festivals that we're part of you'll mm. see wonderful work go to sundance you'll see crap but because so and so directed it who's a famous actor or so and so produced it and so they're in because i i don't want to go on record because we're being recorded but yeah. <laughs> you know, one of one of the big agents called on my behalf for a feature I did, tried to get me in, you know, to to a, to Sundance and said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. It didn't get in ultimately, but it's the kind of horse shit you see every day. It's just terrible. It's just terrible. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm done. I've, I've come <laughs> I'm done. Represent the smaller film festivals, I say. They they look after yeah. filmmakers. Uh, anybody else? Um, what's the film industry? Peyton? Uh yeah, I was actually, I mean, I'm pretty much completely with Richard on this one. I think there's just a lot of recycled big name actors that are just used over and over and over again, and no one else really gets a chance all that much. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are just, uh, they're in, they do a bunch of movies, and then they're out, and then it's the next big person. And, like, there's no, there's no chance for the people that are just, you know, kind of, kind of coming up i guess uh and it, it's you really have to i think just get really lucky to to get in that position that they're in uh and it's no you know i wouldn't like i'm not bashing them i don't think it's the actor's fault they mm -hmm. most of them they just want to work they're happy to work uh yeah. but um you know it's just it's just one of those things that i definitely think needs to change how it changes i i don't know but um we have to do our own content. That's the way it goes. Like I tell actor friends of mine all the time, sorry to interrupt, but find money, go, you know, get a, get a, you know, get a boy toy, man, get some money, get a, you know, whatever, just whatever, man. Sell your body, just get money and go make movies. And whatever, you have, whatever you have to do, you know, and I say that to men, you know, too. I mean, whatever you need to do to get your money to make your own content, because at this point, people can really I mean I'm working with some people now about monetizing a short film and I'm going to get all your movies on the platform because you know to monetize the short form because I really think there's a place for it now in in online uh, entertainment there's a huge huge my kids I have two kids that they won't watch something that's you know they, well TikTok right TikTok what 14 seconds but I'm trying to get them to watch something more than you know, 14 seconds, but short form is, is coming, is, is in guys. It's, yeah, it's definitely. Coming. Um, Bailey, I know you wanted to say something. Yeah. To go back to your question about what do we think the industry is missing was actually, um, something that it was like the seed that was the inspiration for our film. Um, we, 
there were originally five women and we all wanted to get together and create something. And while we were in the brainstorming process of this, like before the 48 hour film festival was even on the horizon for us, we said, well, why not just have five female actors? Why not have a whole female crew? And we, Syro, like went to work and it is not easy to put together a full crew of women filmmakers. We were told time and time again, oh, you're not gonna find a woman in sound or you're not gonna find a female cinematographer. And we refused to take no for an example. I mean, for, we, we just wouldn't take it. And do you wanna talk about your process? Like, yeah, we, uh, it was a lot of production companies that we were talking with that were like, oh yeah, we wanna do a project and have an all female crew. And they were like, good luck with that. You're in the Bay Area, like we, we have a, film community there, it's, it's smaller, but uh, it exists. And everyone said, good luck. And we were like, okay, well, challenge accepted. And in the <laughs> process, we found um, so many talented people. And I just feel like there's a lot of commercial work uh, in the Bay Area specifically, and all the crews are 90% white males. Mm -hmm. And they just rehire each other again and again and again and and they're great and i love them and and all that jazz but i just feel like the opportunity for a lot of women in on the production side of things are lacking and especially on sets if someone's like in GE &E or uh, dp or an ac and they have to carry heavy equipment and they get questioned time and time again on every single set like are you are you okay can you handle that it's like how would you feel being questioned if you're capable of doing your job every single time you go to work yeah. um and the harmony that we had on our set of 16 women was like just fully supportive it was like everybody and we'd never worked together before so we were like anticipating each other's needs um just it like left this open space for creativity and like no power trips at all and from the amount of sets mm -hmm. we've been on it was nothing like we'd ever experienced before so uh that also inspired us to make this we we're making a directory for women on the production side uh, okay. in the Bay Area specifically, uh, San Francisco, Oakland, um, for women. And you can go on, it's called Soft Hold Collective. Uh, and you can go on in all these different departments. Uh, you can find women to like diversify your crew. Mm -hmm. uh, so we felt that was, I think, yeah. our efforts in trying to help change what we need. Yeah, because it, it shouldn't have been so hard for us to find that list of people. And then once we had it, we were like, this is something that should be shared to as many people as possible so that no one is ever told, oh, good luck finding an all-female crew again. That it's like, I want to do an all-female crew. And it's like, cool, here's a directory for that. Yeah. yeah. Or just like diversify. So yeah, softholesclimbing.com. Thank you. That's, that's awesome. I'm, that's awesome, guys. <laughs> I love that. Um, that will be the next stage on making in the future. Um, hopefully, when somebody gets asked what's the industry currently lacking, hopefully it won't be what you guys are saying, basically. Like, it shouldn't be hard to find an all-female crew. Um, and I also want to add Asian American representation in lead roles. For things as well. I just finished watching the second season of Pen15 and uh, Maya Erskine, who is the lead in that. I I don't know if I've seen, uh, or at least I've felt represented by any lead in like a big TV show or film like that. And I feel that it's happened now in 2020, but she wrote herself into that role. I don't think that if she would have gone through all the steps of the industry, she would have been cast in that. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. Um, we are running out of time, but if anybody wants to add anything to what you feel the industry is lacking and um, in, I mean, I, in a nutshell. I basically <laughs> agree with everybody else has said, 
just the hardest thing as a filmmaker is access. So, which is why I love festivals like this, which get in touch with people, get some exposure. I mean, I started, I was a, a writer originally, but very multi-interested in the industry. But I basically just decided one year to start making my own stuff because I didn't want to rely on an industry that I couldn't rely on. So I'm like, fine, I'll just write my own stuff and make my own stuff and act my own stuff. And it's been very fun and rewarding just to do it on my own, even if mm -hmm. I never get rich and famous and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Is there a way for all of us to, you know, get emails and jazz like that where we can connect with each other at a later time? Other festivals I've been involved with have done that for the filmmakers. Um, yeah, I'm sure there is. Um, uh, if you guys are down, I don't want to pester you or anything. You know, it's, no, that'd be awesome. I am a pain in the ass, you can tell. <laughs> uh, very demanding man. Um, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you guys want to, I don't know if you, you want to use the chat box or um, if you want to get in touch. Sure, with I'll you. send you my info, you guys. I'll be happy to. Yeah. Um, it, it probably it also will disappear probably when this ends so maybe let's oh. all email yeah. thread we can yeah just, we can oh on the email, email thread yeah 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 see uh, why you know my wife always tells me what to do because i have no idea what yeah. <laughs> okay um i wish i could i just don't have a lot of time <laughs> we're running out of time unfortunately um but it really has been lovely speaking to you all and um, again, as I said at the beginning, this this program was so varied, and you all made such different and unique films. And I I thoroughly enjoyed watching them all and finding mm -hmm. out how you were all inspired by the story. So thank you for making such lovely films. Can I ask one thank more? You. Can I ask one more question, just out of curiosity? Sure. Of, and you may not have the answer, but I, I wonder if you guys are also interested in this. I'm always curious to know how many movies are submitted to how many the ratio to who gets in in these smaller festivals. It is, is it roughly around a thousand films? And then is it roughly 700, 12? You know, the bigger festivals get like 4,000 submissions. I'm just curious about this level of festival. I mean, I know that Sundance, it's like 15,000, which is probably well, why no one gets in. Um, and I think generally with more audience led fe festivals, um, mid tier, um, like San Francisco Independent, I think it's somewhere between 700 to 1,000. Um, so, yeah, it's much, um, I'm sure Jeff, will, Jeff Ross will know, um, but okay. I know. I'm just I curious. Know yeah. Well, okay. um, so much. well, it has been a pleasure speaking to you all and I wish you all a great film festival. Thank you for taking the time to talk today. Um, and thank you all for making such great films. And thank I look forward to seeing more of your work. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Keep doing the thank great you. work. Thank you. Have a nice festival.